Almost 27 years ago, I was stood as a seven-year-old boy, pretty much in this exact position, as I looked on, watching Hereford United face Brighton for Football League survival. At the end of Saturday, one of them would be dropping out of the Nationwide League. Well, at times in the build-up, it felt like a cup final as two sets of genuine die-hard supporters turned up the volume. But always lurking just below the surface was the awful truth that time was nearly up for Hereford or Brighton. On Saturday, the 3rd of May, 1997, Hereford and Brighton would face off on that pitch in what was essentially the biggest game in each club's history with everything on the line. This is a massive big winner takes all occasion. Both teams started the game on 46 points at the bottom of what is now League Two. Hereford needed a win to survive, but Brighton had a better scoring record, so a draw would be enough to ensure their Football League survival. Hereford would take the lead, but a 62nd minute Brighton equaliser would sink Hereford hearts, including mine at the time, and end a 25 year run in the Football League. <laughs> the events of that day in 1997, I'll never forget. I vividly remember seeing faces of pure sadness, disappointment from Hereford fans, massively contrasted with the joy and excitement of the Brighton fans. Brighton took over 3,000 people to that game and over the years we've often heard from a Brighton perspective about how important that game was for Brighton, for their survival and the game is often celebrated but I feel like the story is never told from another perspective, from the Hereford side. So hopefully guys, I do today justice. But we're not just going to be doom and gloom. We are here to celebrate the history of Hereford. Remember, this is a Phoenix club. United disappeared in 2014, but you've read the title. So much good memories have taken place here. We mentioned the fact that they were a football league club for 25 years straight. Prior to a famous game, we're definitely going to mention in a moment, in the FA Cup, they were a non-league team. And back then, it wasn't like the National League now where you could just win promotion, you had to be elected. So ladies and gents, let's take a little trip down maybe memory lane from my side of things, but it might be interesting for you guys to learn about what is essentially my hometown club. I was born here in Hereford. So ladies and gents, like the video, subscribe if you're new, and let, let me have the pleasure of taking you on this journey. Let's go. So ladies and gents, in the distance you might recognise this end as being the Meadow End and that song you had the pleasure of hearing is a famous song around here. It's kind of like the Hereford equivalent of You'll Never Walk Alone for Liverpool. It's essentially Hereford's anthem, albeit they have released an updated one since the Phoenix Club arose in 2014. As we're making Liverpool comparisons, the Meadow End behind me is essentially Hereford's version of the cop. It's the rowdy end, it's like the Stretford end at Manchester United, the Holt end at Villa Park and so on. And again guys, if I look like I'm crying, I'm not, I might shed a few tears though in this video, it's absolutely bloody freezing. So where I am stood, again, by the Meadow End, this has changed massively from when I came here as a kid, well maybe not necessarily this area, because this essentially was car parking and stuff for many years, but there, there's been a lot of changes around the ground a lot of rejuvenation of the city of Hereford. A lot of money has been spent. The old cattle market, the other end, the Blackfriars end, which currently isn't being used. A lot's changed over there. So we're gonna give you a bit of a, an insight as to the ground. Of course, we're here at Edgar Street. I don't even know if I've mentioned the name of the ground. We're here at Edgar Street. We're also gonna talk about Hereford's history and some memories you might have had here on an away day. Um, we mentioned Brighton fans coming here in a joyous victory in 97, but there's been some huge games taking place here. And you've, you've seen the title, we need to make reference to Hereford's history in the FA Cup, because everyone remembers, or even if they don't remember, they'll know 
of the famous game against Newcastle in 1972, which was obviously massive and completely changed the direction of Hereford United in 72. But there's also been some other big games taking place here. So if you hadn't guessed already, this busy, noisy street behind me, what's the name of it? It's obvious, isn't it? This is Edgar Street itself, because the stadium runs along Edgar Street, of course. So as we said, Hereford's history with the FA Cup is enormous. I mentioned in the title, Giant Killers. So if you didn't know, Hereford were drawn against Newcastle United in 1972. Newcastle were playing in the top flight back then, which would have been the first division, which is equivalent to today's Premier League. Now, Newcastle had a prolific goal scorer called Malcolm McDonald, and he was giving it the big end about how he was going to put 10 past Hereford. People often forget that Hereford went to St. James's Park, drew with Newcastle United and brought them back here to Edgar Street for an FA Cup replay. There are 15,000 people in this ground, it's packed to capacity, a lot of people without tickets and that's just one of them. Now famous replays have kind of become obviously a thing of the past now. Replays seem to be a dying thing. They used to keep replaying games until someone would win, they wouldn't go to penalties and stuff. And Malcolm McDonald, as I said, prior to that famous game, especially the replay, was giving it the big one. To be fair, McDonald did score and took the lead for Newcastle. Newcastle would go 1-0 up, and obviously people presumably thought this would be the end. Newcastle would continue scoring goals, especially Malcolm McDonald, and it would be a smash, a smashing, a drilling, whatever phrase you want to use. But Hereford pulled a goal back, 1-1, and then in what was John Motson's crowning glory on commentary, John Motti, Motti had the pleasure of commentating over that famous FA Cup goal by Ronnie Radford. Now, Ronnie Radford has obviously become a cult hero here in Hereford, but that Radford goal is always shown, always played, when you get a big club playing a small club in the FA Cup. They still play it to this day, and obviously Motti passed away, was it last year? He, I've heard him speak many a time about how that game was his crowning glory, was the start of his absolutely fantastic career. Now, we did a stadium tour at St. James's Park. We saw Malcolm McDonald on the wall in like the players' entrance. And I did joke, uh, or should I say the tour guys knew I was from Hereford, and they were joking to me uh, about Malcolm McDonald. So Hereford might be a forgotten club nowadays, but even fans of big clubs like Hereford, a little bit older than me, always remember Hereford for some of those days in the 70s and so on. So I, I better mention, guys, we're outside the Len Weston stands. Now, Weston are a local cider maker. The Weston family, responsible for your beautiful blacktop, cracking cider. So we're outside the Len Weston stand. Now, as I said in the intro, I was stood along up here, quite near to where those Brighton away fans were in 97. And this stand over here hasn't really changed much since the 90s, since I was a kid. I was born in 89. So as we make our way towards the away end, towards the cattle market, I'll just give you a little bit of a backstory if you are new to the channel. I was born here in Hereford, grew up about 20, 25 minutes down the road in Ledbury, which is a small little, little market town. So technically, my local club would be Ledbury Town but they're tiny. So I class Hereford as my hometown club. My mum and dad separated when I was very young and my dad has pretty much always lived in Hereford. Still does with my brother and my sister. So he's been a, a season ticket holder most of his life. Now, going back to that game in 72 versus Newcastle, you see those kids famously run onto the pitch. Uh, those kids behind the string holding them holding them in place behind the goal. My dad was one of those kids in the parkers, right behind the goal, running onto the pitch. And the crowd, the crowd are invading the pitch. It's the crowd who come on at the end. A million little boys come on, all in snorkel parkers. It's one of the best crowd celebs you're ever likely to see. And they mob him, but they've all got the parkers, the identical ones with the snorkels. A tremendous reply from Radford. Um, I always try and point him out when I watch that old footage back. I think even he forgets which one he was. 
But that is also a famous memory, a famous scene from that day. The kids in the parkers running onto the pitch and celebrating. Now that's something I remember from coming here as a kid watching Hereford. Pitch invasions, every excuse to get on the pitch and invade the pitch. So here we go. Still by the Len Weston stand, guys. Uh, part of this stand is, well, I think now all of this end of the stand is for away fans. Back in the day, they would have behind the goal, the Blackfriars stand, which we'll talk about in a moment because it's currently not being used. But just behind me over there, currently the away fans will be there. We watched Torquay, as I said, a few weeks ago, and that's where the away fans were. So, understandably, the Blackfriars end is on Blackfriars Street. Now, if you're watching this and you've been here back in the day, maybe in the 70s, even in the 80s or 90s, when I started watching Hereford, and you're an away fan, you came here on an away day, you would have come, let's quickly cross the road without getting run over. You'd have come in this end, a rather unpretty end. Now, if you are a subscriber of the channel, you'll know we always reference the fact that I get a little bit aroused when I look through corners of football stadiums, when you get a cheeky tease, a little sexy glimpse of the seats. This is a bit of a, this is a bit of a letdown over here. The corners are filled in, they're looking grotty, but I do also have a little bit of a thing for floodlights. I do get a bit of a twinge when I see some lovely old school floodlights. So again, if you're watching this and came here many years ago, this has changed massively. Behind me over here, you've got a Waitrose. A Waitrose next to bloody Edgar Street, it's crazy. And as I make my way further this way, oh my God, the gates are open. The gates are bloody open. Let's go guys. So I've made my way in officially, just spoke to the guys in the office and Hereford is a really friendly club by the way. So if you are to come here, they're very welcoming and warming as they've been with me. So if we do just mention briefly the Blackfriars end, um, obviously it's not looking its best at the moment. Reason being, it's coming down. We've just spoke with someone in the office, they've got planning and it is soon going to be knocked down for a new stand, which is going to be music to Hereford fans' ears because it has become somewhat of an eyesore. You can see um, the banners, you can see the Ronnie Radford one in the distance, the Spirit of 72. Lots of references to two clubs becoming one, obviously United and Hereford FC, you know, the legacy being continued through Hereford FC. But it'd be really interesting because that stand is in a perfect location as we saw. We saw the Waitrose, but there's also like loads of shops and stuff, a proper kind of uh, a new revitalised area of Hereford, whereby maybe like the hospitality side could be incorporated into that stand. Who knows? That's for Hereford to say. But so many memories, um, even from being sat up here. Normally we would stand, but sometimes we would sit up here. Over in the far corner where the mower is, um, speaking of FA Cup games, I remember being over there in the corner, again at the Lem Western stand, but in the other end, watching Hereford United play Leicester in 1999. Again, they held Leicester right here at Edgar Street to a nil-nil draw. 28 years ago, before Hereford beat Newcastle, I started the commentary by making a comparison between two centre-forwards at that time by the name of Malcolm McDonald and Billy Meadows. So today, as a small concession to that occasion, we start by looking at the two number nines. Emil Heskey is not unlike McDonald was then, strong and fast. He's also an England international who already has a goal at Wembley on his CV, albeit in a League Cup final. At the time, I think Leicester were playing at Filbert Street, but it was that great Leicester team that had like Robbie Savage, Muzzy Izziet, Muzzy Izziet, Muzzy Izziet. Um, they had Martin O'Neill as the manager. A fantastic Leicester side that would, would that would win the League Cup. 
So it was a really good Leicester side back then as well. If we're talking more FA Cup memories, I, rem I don't remember because I'd have been one years old, one year old. But I've seen the match back numerous times. Man United struggled to win here at Edgar Street in 1990. United in 1990 would win here 1-0, but they had a really strong team, Mark Hughes. Uh, it was obviously in the early years of Fergie, so they weren't quite the mammoth they would become later on in the, in the 90s. But it just shows a few, just a few matches of many in Hereford United's FA Cup history. We're going to have a little wander around. We have been given uh, a slight green light, so long as we avoid the pitch and stuff. So let's get some really good shots and share more memories of this FA Cup giant killer. This is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I have emailed Hereford, as I said, and they did give me the green light to, to do some filming, but I have just rocked up somewhat spur of the moment today. So all my memories are flooding back. I've just had a lovely conversation with uh, the lady in the office. She was talking about Hereford. Uh, I think they might be doing like a vote on what their away kit will be next season. There's a pink one. There's like a clarity and gold kind of one. And Hereford's traditional away colors. You might see me wearing the shirt on the channel, red and black. Now. Let's go down memory lane once again. Let's do a bit of nostalgia. So obviously here you've got the dugouts and stuff. We'll do some close-ups in a moment. But I don't know if I mentioned, I was a mascot here in January of 1998 as Hereford played, I think it was an evening game under the lights. I've got the VHS tape at home against Tramia Rovers. I believe, I think Hereford lost 4-0 that game. I was a mascot. I was one of the little kids running onto the pitch over here and back then when you were a mascot as a kid you would take a penalty uh, against a Hereford goalie prior to kickoff and the penalty kick was in front of the meadow end in front of my family some of my dad's mates and stuff and what did old Roy do he hit the bloody post didn't he I hit the post over there so I think I did play here as a kid for some match as well but yes long story short the tunnel behind me where the players would come through I came through all the way back in 1998. So let's just speak, let's just address the elephant in the room, address the fact that if you are a subscriber of the channel, you'll know I am a Manchester United fan. Now you'll find a lot of people who support um, smaller clubs, their local clubs will also support a bigger club, not for any sort of specific reason, but they'll generally support two clubs. I was no different as a kid. So around that time of 1997, around the time of the Brighton game, I, my, my loyalties are probably split 50-50. As I mentioned, I was mascot um, six months later for an FA Cup game versus Tramia. But to say that Brighton game didn't affect my football in future would be an understatement. As somewhat of a glory fan of Manchester United, especially in the 90s, I was used to celebrating wins, winning trophies, always winning. So I had a massive balance, a massive contrast between my Manchester United fandom and my Hereford United fandom. The heartbreak, the agony and disappointment from getting relegated in the old Division 3 at the time, contrasted with that same season, Manchester United would win yet another Premier League in the 96-97 season. It was the last season of Eric Cantona. So I feel like had Hereford not have got relegated in that game, I don't think it would have pushed me quite as much to kind of go the Man United way. And as I'm here today, even though I'm in my Hereford shirt and I'm reminiscing about old times, I can't currently claim to be a Hereford FC fan. And I know it's bad. People should stick to their local clubs through the good and bad times. But again, remember, during that Brighton game, I was seven years old. I was only eight years old when I was a mascot. So back then, you don't appreciate the fact of that's part of football. You have good times and you have bad times. That is football. But as I now am an older, or an old guy, a 34 year old man, I almost want to do justice to some of these smaller clubs. I almost want, I almost feel guilty for my Man United loyalty to an extent. You know, I'm, I'm a proud red as well. But I want to shed some light on clubs like Hereford who need all the support they can get. Financially, Hereford suffered many a difficulty in the 80s, which obviously re-arose in the 90s. And people always talk about how important that game was for Brighton for their survival as a club. Remember, Brighton didn't even have a ground at that time. They, I think they were playing at like 
Gillingham, were they possibly? So the thought of playing at Gillingham in non-league, would the football, would would uh, would the old conference even allow that? Who knows? They were absolutely bloody skin, and the the fate of Brighton could have been very very different than it is now as a Premier League club with De Zerbi and and all the great players they've got. Often, my dad and my brother and and me will speculate if things had been different, if things had gone the other way round, would someone have invested into Hereford if Hereford had survived in the Football League? Would Hereford be now a Premier League club? I don't think so. Hereford's not a very trendy city as much as I, I love it here. The highest league Hereford's ever played in was the old Division 2, which is currently now the Championship. They only lasted a season in that league. But we'll go on to some of Hereford's history again in a moment. Let's just take another look at... Edgar Street. Oh, and by the way, Ben in the distance. I can't believe I didn't even recognise that that is Ben Bowen, the uncle of the famous Jared Bowen. Remember, Jared Bowen made his name here at Hereford. He's a local lad from around the corner in Lempster. What a fantastic shot that is of Edgar Street. I'm in, I'm in the Meadow End, by the way. One of the rowdiest, lively of ends in all of National League North football. Ladies and gents, we started outside the meadow end behind these turnstiles. So you'll come through those turnstiles, down the terraces. I think for those fans who reminisce about times prior to the newly formed Premier League in the 90s, you'll often miss the terraces at bigger clubs, Premier League clubs and so on. You still get to experience the terraces when you check out football at this level, which is often the allure, the draw. Just look. Just look at that fantastic view. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Hereford have had many an FA Cup uh, exciting games here at Edgar Street. They played Arsenal in 85 and drew 1-1 here at Edgar Street. Now, when people talk about the 1972 Newcastle game, they always forget that after beating Newcastle here at Edgar Street 2-1, they would play West Ham. Now, West Ham would also come here to Edgar Street and they would also struggle to win. Four days after their Newcastle victory, Hereford hold West Ham United to a goalless draw. The replay is in London. They come away with a draw, nil-nil, which meant the replay at Upton Park, which West Ham won 3-1. But again, what not a lot of people remember or make reference to is the fact that Hereford would play West Ham again in the FA Cup two years later in 1974, when things were a little bit different. The first leg was at Upton Park, a draw, and the replay here, again, at the Mighty Edgar Street, Hereford won 2-1. So a giant killer indeed. There's Jones! Yes! Alan Jones has scored! So when I started here today, I didn't think I'd get this up close to Edgar Street. So this is absolutely fantastic. You'd stand here watching the game. Now look at this view of the pitch. Ben Bowen's done a fantastic job, that pitch. I think I've got a new thing, not just for corners of football stadiums, but for lovely... Uh, maintained pitches but stood right here fans would have witnessed Hereford get into the Football League as I said they were elected after finishing second in 72 after that cup run after beating Newcastle and almost beating West Ham they'd get into the Football League and they would go straight straight up into what is now League One which back then would have been the old third division possibly it's confusing because obviously the Premier League came and change things, then the championship came and changed things again. Hereford would then get promoted again in a 75-76 season. And as I spoke about earlier on, they only spent one season in the second tier of English football. They would get relegated, later on get relegated again. And then I think they spent around 19 years in what is now League Two, was Division Four, then became Division Three around that time of the Brighton game. So my journey with Hereford the fact that rather than wallowing in negativity and getting upset as a kid, I chose the easy option 
and went for Premier League glory, success. But my decline in interest in Hereford mirrored the decline of the club. We made reference to the fact that financially they were facing a lot of difficulty in the 90s and they would really struggle to get out of what was the conference, what is now national, the National League, the Vanarama National League. They would, however, gain promotion in 2006 after winning the playoffs, but ultimately they would again be relegated from the Football League in 2012. It was that relegation that essentially sealed Hereford United's fate. They had not a lot of debt in footballing terms, like 1.3 million, um, and they had no choice but to essentially go bust. Fans, very upset, would set up the Phoenix, Phoenix Club of Hereford FC. I think legally they couldn't use the United name. I think there's a, there's a certain amount of years, isn't there? I think there's a chance right now that Hereford could apply for that name back. I'm not too sure. I remember speaking to my dad about it. On Rise Football Paradise, we try and celebrate, obviously, football club's history, the, the history of the grounds. We try and reminisce about old times and so on. So I often like these quirky old parts of stadiums. But again, I think in this case, a new stand is going to be good for everyone, for Hereford, for the club, of course, for the fans. So that was absolutely fantastic. As much as, you know, as I said I'd spoke to Hereford, I was expecting such... Uh, or to get so up close to the pitch and all around the ground. So credit to Hereford FC for that. What we're going to do now, guys, is we're just going to walk around the outside as to where some of those hospitality lounges are, where the shop is, um, and you know, the, the other side of the meadow end, because so many memories for Hereford fans, but also I'm sure loads of you watching this, some, those, some of those older than me, generally speaking, the demographic for this channel is sort of my age and above. So we can all reminisce about this historic ground, it is a historic ground. It is very run down as we look again at the Blackfriars stand. You can see why they're gonna knock it down regardless of um, history and so on. Behind me over here, this is the old market. This used to be a genuine cattle market. If you didn't know, Hereford are called the Bulls because of the whole cattle market and so on. And when I was a kid wandering these streets, it was very old school. You'd have farmers here on the weekend and it would be an old traditional market. But now, past that Waitrose, you've got an Odeon. Uh, there's, most of you in the area have probably been to Beefy Boys. There, there is one in Cheltenham now. But Beefy Boys, uh, the popular, famous kind of burger place originated over there in Hereford. Give a little plug to Hereford, rooms available to hire for different kind of functions and stuff, maybe a wedding and so on. Let's give a little shout out to Matt Healy. I haven't seen him in years, local DJ behind me. Hereford fan, he would always be DJ, DJing in the old Yates, the old Litton Tree, when we would attend the dance floor every week. Behind us, of course, the club shop, which is closed at the moment, but it was open on match day when we we're here against Torquay. So I'm going to overlay some footage now of inside the club shop. This has been pretty much like it is now for many years, quite a small club shop. Not much smaller than Forest Green where we were the other week though. Yeah, all that excitement's got to, gone to my head. 
that's where the players and stuff would would enter. I might be wrong again. Who knows? I was very young when I would frequent this ground almost on a weekly basis. As I said, we did get up to Old Trafford and I did have the, the pleasure of having a Villa fan mum. So we went to Villa Park and occasionally Wolves with my stepdad as well. Behind me though, guys, you've got more sweets, bars and so on. You've got the Montgomery Waters Executive Club. But over there in the distance, you've got Radford's Bar. Now we were in Radford's Bar last time we were here. It's really good because just before the game, you can have a pint pitch side as well, similar to where we were. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What's the score prediction? 3 0? 4 0? 3 0. Tidy. Come on. And just to remind you guys, Ronnie Radford is the scorer of that famous wonder goal against Newcastle. So then guys, this pretty much concludes our video. We're making our way back to the meadow end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Normally we do big clubs. Obviously the priority this season has been ticking each and every one of those Premier League stadiums off the list. That is the match day ticket office, by the way. And we made many reference to Brighton in this video because this video is essentially a lead in to the video next week when we tick one of only two more Premier League stadiums we need to visit off the list. We've only got Brighton and Luton, the Amex and Kenilworth Road to visit as part of this season of doing each Premier League stadium. So I thought I would lead into that video with a bit of history, not just about Hereford, but the importance for both teams of that game versus Brighton in 97. Meadow M behind. So if you're interested in the Brighton video, the history of Brighton and the stadium tour at the Amex, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. We are going to be joined by a Brighton fan. He's also doing the tour. So it will be very interesting to hear his side of things. I think he is a little bit younger than me, so he probably doesn't remember the Brighton game like I do. But it will be interesting nonetheless. So it seems fitting now then, now then guys. Let's finish it by this beautiful HFC hedge. Hereford United, we all love you. I'm supposed to say, we'll always support you and we'll follow you too. But this glory hunting eight-year-old boy slowly drifted away from Hereford over the years. So I feel after they showed me, the channel, some kindness and generosity, I feel like now there's no excuse. We're not a kid anymore. We're an adult. You can't just drift away from your local club, especially when the lure of such Man United isn't so attractive anymore. I'm going to show more love to my hometown club in the future, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, check out one of the videos next to me here, and I'll see you in one of those videos. Look out where we're coming right at you When the southern leaves And we'll try to beat you United, united We all love you We'll always support you And we'll follow you through